Hey guys, welcome back to Exotic Car DIY. So we're back in the shop working on the E63, hopefully with a cheap, easy upgrade for the audio system in this. My silver car had the B&O or Bang & Olufsen system in there. And don't get me wrong, it sounded good, but don't feel bad if you had an HK because now I've had both, so I can say this. It's not $5,500 better. <laughs> so either way, there's improvement for the base side on both. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to install like four 12-inch subs in here. No, I'm kidding. We're actually going to be installing the JBL base hub in here. So this is an unsponsored video. Nobody pays me anything to do this. Uh, so why am I not doing any big subs? Well, I'm not 16 years old anymore, so I don't need all the 12s. This thing's going to do a lot better than the factory sub, and it's going to be hidden. I hate having a box back here. I don't want anything aftermarket. I just want a trunk. Plus, it doesn't weigh very much. So anyway, the factory system is a little six inch sub here and on the B&O, it's a little six inch sub down there. So we're just gonna be putting a 11 inch sub in the spare tire. So anyway, let's go and get started. Here's kind of the tricky part. I can't play any music for you without getting flagged by YouTube, but I'm gonna try to show you that it does work. So anyway, let's go and get started. All right, so here's one test we can do. Here is just a bass hertz test. So I got the bass going down, that is the frequency. So we're gonna see when we can't hear anything anymore, see if there's any kind of noticeable thing. So we're getting kind of in the low tones here around 60. I'm guessing it's gonna go away. Still hear it? Still hear it? Still hear it getting quieter? Actually, I'm still hearing it surprisingly there it goes almost faded away around 40 completely unaudible all right so anyway let me give you just a quick overview of how this is going to work it's actually a pretty easy install right here is our amplifier we're going to tap into not the line outs but the line ins so the rca inputs into this sub's going to go right here there's our positive there's our negative <laughs> that's going to be it so anyway let's go ahead and get started and the only really thing we need to install, I just bought this cheesy kit from Amazon. Some Chinese kit that comes with everything you need to hook up all the stuff. So probably the world's easiest sub to install. And hey, before we get started, hit the like button and subscribe, please. There we go. So here's the harness. These are your speaker inputs. If you want to use a speaker, this is your remote to turn it on. Obviously your power, your negative. And then what we're going to use is the RCAs. So we can go and just plug this in and technically we can cut away all the speaker inputs. Then it's so close that even if you didn't want to fuse, plug them in right there, it actually reaches. But anyway, we got to put a fuse in here. So we'll go ahead and just use the fuse straight onto this piece. No need for long lengths of wire anywhere. Definitely see no need to drill any holes in my car. So we're just going to zip tie the fuse here. Now we just hook up the positive. Now hook up the negative wire. I love these little waterproof ones. Now we play with some fire. Now we'll just kind of run this the same way the other wires run. Obviously we're going to make this all pretty because that's what everybody judges the quality by, right? We obviously could easily hook it up to the main, the batter ground, but I always like to do the ground out of chassis. Next thing we're going to do is modify some RCA. So this side is going to plug into the amp and you can see they go to one wire, which is kind of convenient. But then here in the middle, we need to splice it into the factory thing. So technically there is four wires in here that we need to connect. So what we're going to have to do is cut them, strip them, and inside we've exposed the four wires. So we don't know what those are, right? We need to figure out what they are. So we're going to further strip each wire down. So now just to identify it, we know we have a blue one and we have a white one, so we're gonna figure out what's the positive and negative for each plug. So go ahead and clip this to the white one center. So white positive is yellow. Okay, white negative is white. Okay, black positive is black. And blue negative is blue. I'll put this all in the description, but real quick. On your amp, there's a connector with 12 pins. Pin two and three are brown and white. The white is your positive RCA signal, 
the brown is your negative RCA signal. Since there's only two signals, we need to combine it to make four inputs. What we're going to do is the white, the positive, is going to be the positive, which is black and yellow. And to the brown, we're going to have white and blue. And then that'll connect our cables. All right, so now with our wires together, this should be our positive on both. And not negative. And this should be our negative on both so good all right so here's the way here's how we're going to install this thing without cutting any holes we need a piece of wire you can use a paper clip anything like that what this is going to do is slide into the connector you need to leave a half inch of metal now you can either solder this to this um i don't think you can twist it around it with it staying or you can use i'm going to use these shrink connectors again Likely the best way is going to be heat shrink, but this is going to work easier if you don't solder. All right, it's not going anywhere. We also did the remote. And I also put a link to the connectors in the description. All right, so now what we've created is a positive and a negative plug that wise into these that go in the amplifier. So now we gotta do is put this in the car. Now we're back here in the trunk on the passenger side. So we need to get the wires down here. And I'm gonna to try to do this without having to take off all this stuff. So we're gonna run the wire through this channel, come down here. So I need to pop off this. There's a screw here and hopefully we can feed the wire down to the bottom that way. So 10 millimeter, couple snaps. All right, that should allow us plenty of room to tuck it that way. So we're gonna start and follow this wire. I've simply used the remote cable to tie a knot around the RCAs just so I can pull the bigger guy through. Now we've got them pulled away through here, and now we're going to tuck them down this way. Ta -da. Now our cables have arrived. Now we just got to make them pretty. All right, so here's our subwoofer ramp and here's our plug. It's unplugged. Like I said, there are 12 holes on here. If you spin it around like this, starting at the top left, that's one. The brown is two, the yellow is three, then it goes back up to the top. So we're going to plug into plugs two and three, which are this brown and yellow, I suppose. And then plug eight, which is this purple one behind the black, is going to be our power cord. Uh, it's the one in the middle, not the black little one on the side. So we can either A, leave this plugged in if you want to keep your sub plugged in, or you can unplug it, which I'm going to do, and just we're going to plug our wire straight in here. This one's going into yellow. This is our RCA positive. This one's going into the RCA negative. Then our remote's going to go right here, which is pin number eight. And now we can test it to make sure everything's set up. Now, obviously, we just need to secure this in a way that it's not going to get bumped or anything like that. So I'm going to take the connector. I would tend to agree that if you left it plugged in and plugged it in on this side, it'd be a little bit more secure. But I'm not too worried about this. I'm not packing my trunk full of stuff. And there are other ways to do this. Like I said, I did not want to cut the harness. And so that is why I did it this way. If you cut the harness or you solder it or you splice it, you know, maybe you could do it a little cleaner. But for me, this is what was important is not cutting any of my harnesses at all. So now we've got our wires fed, so we just kind of need to find a nice rooting. So I definitely prefer to keep all the wires together. So we're going to go and come over here. Now they're both connected and identical, so it doesn't matter which one you go into. So the last thing I hooked up was the controller. So this is a personal preference thing. Most likely you're going to want this up front. I am not going to run it up front. I'm going to set my base where I want it and adjust it with the head unit only. So this is just going to be curled up back here only, but it does need to be plugged in. Okay guys, it's been about two weeks since we installed the sub and I want to show you the install. Overall, been extremely happy with this. Obviously, the trunk looks completely stock. There is nothing aftermarket about it except for just the factory amp is unplugged. And then, of course, here is the install. So the sub fits nicely in there. 
this thing closes nicely on it um, you know the wiring is very simple it's just one little loom over here i did put all the factory tools just wrap up in a towel that really doesn't bother me at all because everything else is basically stock and like i said this thing sits so totally flat it does not seem to affect the sound because remember the b and o subwoofer is down here from the factory anyway well guys, what is the verdict on the spare tire sub? It's all about expectations. If you're expecting it to sound like 212s, you're going to be disappointed. It does not sound like 212s. My expectation was hopefully I was like, maybe it'll sound like a good 8, just a little bit of improvement. And it has over delivered from that expectation. It sounds great in my opinion. Uh, it gives an overall balanced feel to the stereo. It feels more like a high-end system. It is better than the B&O sub by far. So overall, I'm very, very happy. You can't beat the install. Like that took me like 30 minutes and I had to figure it out. Hopefully it's similar install for you guys. So, and for the cost, I don't think you can beat that uh, for what I was trying to achieve. Remember, I'm not trying to break any windows here or anything like that. And on another note, I got my ambient light kit installed. You can check out that video in the top right. Now the sub did take a little bit to get dialed in. Remember, it has that controller where you can like turn it up and down that most people mount somewhere in the car. I did not want that in the car. A, because I didn't want to run up here and B, that's just kind of ghetto. I want everything to work the way it's supposed to work. So that is still in the trunk. I found that keeping the crossover way low, like 50 hertz helped a lot to get rid of that kind of that echoey boomy bass that's, you know, between like 60 and 120 hertz. And because um, the, the factory speakers do pick that up very nicely. So it's turned way down. The gain I think is around mid. The cool thing about the HK is your EQ settings can be saved differently for each input. So your Bluetooth will be different than your USB, will be different than your you know satellite radio versus your CD, et cetera, et cetera. So I have it set up individually per each one, but pretty much all of them are. the uh, I have the bass turned down to like negative one. That way it gives me a lot of swing to turn that sub up and down. And the mids are around three and then the, the treble around eight. And I found that seems to work perfectly on almost everything so i typically use spotify and so you know i can play around the bass a little bit more freely on that but when i'm just listening to usb or satellite radio it gets a little different and i like it being able to it how it saves everything individually which which makes it really nice now i found playing music for the video doesn't really help at all but i did do a bass test just to see if it hit lower and i did find it hits much harder from that 40 down to 20 hertz while the factory sub kind of started to drop off somewhere around the 40 hertz and was completely gone around 35. So it does hit a lot lower and it'll definitely shake things in your car. Definitely still uh, hitting pretty good right now. Probably right about there, 21 hertz where it drops off really well. So yeah, definitely hits the lower and definitely shook the car a lot on its way down. So a lot better in this test. Overall, I'm extremely pleased with this. I would recommend it. I am not sponsored by anybody, so don't buy it, buy it. I don't care. All I ask is that you hit that like button on the video, please. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching and be sure to check out my other videos.